It is perhaps with luck on my part, and the incredible thoughtfulness of the MCU writers and directors, that they have introduced a solo film dedicated to Natasha Romanoff that has us here, right at this moment. By witness to what Natasha has gone through, all comes to fruition once we get to know her, and for me, this is beautiful. Once a hardened, intelligent and brilliant spy working for the government, barely hinting at any type of emotion that can give her away, Natasha, without a shadow of a doubt, is extremely good at her job. But a job doesn't have to define a person. Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, after understanding some parts of her origin, has us perhaps emphasising, if not sympathising, with her on some level. And this is where we can finally see her on her own, her strengths, her weaknesses, without being eclipsed by the other Avengers. However, Natasha getting to know them throughout her time on the team gave us, and them, the rare chance to meet Natasha under the Black Widow. Someone who is open-minded, and more importantly, open-hearted. This is two takes, and this is one shot, an analysis of the Avenger, Natasha Romanoff. Spoilers are ahead. Natasha, introduced to us in Iron Man 2 as Tony Stark's assistant, sparked an interest in her character once we realised she could look after herself physically in a fight. The double agent was then revealed almost immediately to Tony who could only roll his eyes. Nothing was a surprise to him, and because of that, it wasn't a surprise to us. What was surprising was later on, when Natasha showed more than her brilliance in combat and interrogation. We thought Loki might have exposed her weakness by bringing up her past by presenting her as a monster in a crowd of killers and liars, doing their dirty work for them. But no, her goal was simpler, and she thanked him for his cooperation. When Steve Rogers got angry with her keeping secrets from him because of her double agent status and other missions for Fury, Steve got furious and demanded explanations. She looked a little upset, and as she did sacrifice where she stood in accordance with the government and followed Steve on his own mission based on trust and driven goals. But no, what surprised us, if we looked back at it all, was her fear in two places against two people based on their reputation. First was the Winter Soldier. Bucky Barnes, as an assassin for Hydra, because he would stop at nothing to finish his mission. Brainwashed, controlled beyond reason, he was almost like a machine without a moral compass. And then Bruce Banner, when she went to recruit him to research the Tesseract. His reputation was a person who was un uncontrollable. And this is interesting, as both men were actually out of their control in different ways, if you think about it. The lack of control, even when it comes to showing some kind of emotion, is what Natasha uses to gain intelligence and the high ground. The most prominent scene that shows this is within her own solo film, with Dracov in the control room. She pushes him to the point of him hitting her in the face so she could no longer smell him because of a pheromone lock in her nasal passage. And this is a beautiful scene showing that words can have more power than action, and the beauty lies in how Natasha can do both. You see, she has a set of very specific skills, after all. I wanted to go further than simply ticking a couple of boxes on how hardcore Natasha is. We know that already. I wanted to look at her relationships and how she got to where she was before her death. It feels it begins in The Winter Soldier, where relationships outside of work begin to blossom. I will get to Clint Barton later, but for now, based on what Marvel has shown us in a certain order, I wanted to start with Steve. It's at the start of the Winter Soldier that we see them both getting in the swing of working together, and how Natasha might feel like she's getting comfortable with Steve whilst working with him, since they have conversations on who Steve could date. However, if you have listened to the Steve Rogers episode, you can tell that Winter Soldier shows that the government is corrupt, and so Steve and Natasha go on the run. From then on, through many conversations, there is an aspect of trust that forms because Steve is letting her in, and then Natasha reciprocates, and suddenly she has two friends, Clint being the other. I would perhaps be assuming this next part, but if you become friends with work colleagues and then discover that they have your back on the outside too, you might begin to wonder what else you could have. 
This sense of wanting more comes into play when she becomes an Avenger, following Steve because they have the same morals and values deep down. When it comes to being an Avenger, that means more friends, right? Right, because in Age of Ultron, in the party, shows that and a lot more. Basing it from 2021's Black Widow film, where we realise Natasha's childhood onwards was rife with lack of choices, Natasha chooses to let them in, even if it is slightly. And a slight side note here, when it comes to being an Avenger, Natasha is the most hands-on, hands down. Hawkeye specialises in a bow, Thor is a god, Hulk is an experiment gone wrong, Steve is an experiment gone right, and Iron Man is due to mechanical engineering and intelligent design. If we follow the comics, Black Widow is actually enhanced using another version of the Super Serum. This seems to be desired a lot in the Marvel Universe, whereupon she is faster and stronger. But the MCU has not confirmed nor denied this, therefore just for now, let's just say she's the badass that can think up a way of escaping, or making you tell all your dirty secrets without really trying. Intelligence is power, after all, and being able to fight and defend oneself comes in handy even if the Red Room stole your childhood, but we shall get to that later. Going back to Age of Ultron, this film also emphasises a hint of romance for her with Bruce, however that is short-lived whether that was based on the audience disliking the pairing or whether because it was a ruse to essentially place the two lowest ranking Avengers up to speed with the rest is up to the debate. But my theory is still on the basis of Natasha trying to find out what else she can have, since she got herself some friends. And I say, why not? The importance lies in her trying to see what else she can have, and then having the courage to let it go when it didn't work. And now, Clint Barton. Their relationship, in many moments, showed a friendship through memories and explanations throughout the Avengers timeline and even in 2021's Black Widow and Hawkeye series. They reflected the best of each other in an open way because they both did a job that they couldn't talk about, endured loss and loneliness, and because of their in intuitive instincts on many matters, Hawkeye, Clint Barton, didn't take that faithful shot when it came to him have killed Black Widow all those years ago. And in that same time period, Natasha using her skill set for whomever wanted to hire her without caring of the consequences. This made her a target and placed her on the radar of S.H.I.E.L.D. in a bad way. Hence Agent Barton, hence the shot not taken, and hence her change of heart. She decided to join Barton, join S.H.I.E.L.D., and this is where we see her, with Tony in Iron Man 2 as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. We see her being called Auntie Nat by Barton's kids, becoming an Avenger and saving the world in her own way. And in more ways than one, Clint saved Natasha's life. Because of his instinct, he saved her from herself. From 2021's Black Widow, we can understand that her training started around the age of six, which in itself is just mind-blowing. And then to realise that the family we are first introduced to is actually a ruse, who simply hand her over to the Red Room programme. Then to find out later, this also happened with her real family by selling her off, even if her biological mother stopped at nothing to look for her daughter before she died, shows the devastation and the person Natasha is forcibly trained to be. I mean, no punches spared, right? All in all, since then, Natasha has not had a structured sense of free will or how to perhaps express her emotions, as it was assumed it was trained out of her in the Red Room. And to add perhaps salt in the wound, even if it was a somewhat lucky escape, her sister, Yelena, introduced to Red Room a few years later, was subject to mind-controlled drugs, had no free will to speak of. So Natasha got off lightly, even if it was to the cost of someone she loves. If Natasha stayed with the Red Room before Barton got to her, she would have been another mindless Black Widow. Lucky for Natasha, and lucky for Yelena, but understanding the rest of the Black Widow film with has Yelena free from her drug speaks volumes on what happens when you are free. But this freedom goes deeper, as Natasha has always kept her heart open, but not just in the traditional sense. So all of those moments I have explained earlier about her looking upset was actually genuine. The beauty of all of this was that she did this throughout her years as Black Widow. They did not take full control over her. 
The quote, pain can make you stronger, from 2021's Black Widow, rings true in many ways. And from the advice of her fake mother to never let them take her heart, to keep her open, her Natasha not falling victim to becoming another mindless agent in the midst of Black Widows. Natasha was able to keep her heart open through things, not letting the Red Room take it. And this means through everything. Any pain caused by others, whether that was physical or through a biting remark, Natasha openly invited it. We just didn't know it. Loki, Bruce, Steve, the Avengers, all those people will have hurt her. She used the pain to fuel herself into doing better. A very good mental mindset, but also makes her look and act closed off, when really she was the one that had her heart on her sleeve the entire time. And with the friends that bite back, the Avengers eventually became a family to her. And within her solo film, her Ruse family became another one. Therefore, like putting two halves back together, Natasha smiled knowing that her past was left where it should be, so she could go back to the other family who needed her the most. She was whole in the sense that she had made peace with the past and was looking forward to the future. From the beginning of just doing a job, getting out of that business to do right, then finding friends around her that turn into family, Natasha writes the wrongs of what she used to do by saving the world. Natasha then goes on the run to find her Ruse family needing her help, finding respect and eventually healing open wounds based on her own personal trauma that had her realise that sure, she was brought into this world with two families, the biological one and the Ruse one, not really wanting her, to eventually finding two families in her later years that did want her and with their help, she was able to heal. We are able to really see who Natasha is. And it's a beautiful thing to see. If you enjoyed what was said, please follow me on Anchor, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms to never miss an episode. Be kept in the loop for new content on my Instagram and Twitter page. For more of a visual appeal, I've introduced a YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed to read what was said, instead, follow my blog, linked elsewhere. I'm a podcaster that enjoys this process and it wouldn't have been made a reality without you, the listener. And so I thank you for listening and I hope you stick around for more.